The depths of the Earth's oceans are fit to burst with all manner of monstrous critters. It's like a David Lynch film down there. All manner of beasts slinking around, getting up to mischief. You won't believe some of them. These are terrifying sea creatures that actually exist. Number 20. Otoya. For the number 20 on our list, we'll be visiting the very ancient and fairly big worm that lived in the sand millions of years ago. Its name, the Atoya. Atoya was a predatory worm that lived in burrows for most of its life, measuring 8 centimeters in length, but some reached up to 15 centimeters. It was spherical and long, like most worms, and had no backbone. It also resided in tiny U-shaped tunnels excavated in the sea bottom, which is used to ambush hiding spots. It existed in the mid-Cambrian period about 520 million years ago, according to scientists. One characteristic that distinguished it from other worms was that it was a very aggressive ambush predator, eating these crazy, weird, snail-like mollusks. It had a circular mouthpiece at the back of its head with 40 to 50 spines on it, perhaps for grabbing onto struggling victims. Atoya's back end also featured tiny hooks that presumably served as anchors to keep it in place. It was even cannibalistic, killing and eating its own which is pretty brutal. The Atoya also from time to time consumed Fildea, because Fildea was a much smaller worm of the Cambrian period, and apparently quite tasty. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Now maybe I just love SpongeBob SquarePants too much, but I think coral is fascinating. Technically it's animals, but they look like rocks. Most bizarre. But much like a plant, they feed off of energy and that they absorb from the sun, and they're very strange. Many people consider things that are bizarre to be scary, and in the image I'm showing you on the screen, you can see a ship has been totally covered and swallowed up by coral. It almost makes it look like one giant creature. A monster almost. If I saw this thing in person, I'd be terrified, wouldn't you? Be sure to comment down below using the hashtag sweet topic and let me know your opinion in relation to what we just showed you on the screen. Number 19. Goblin Shark. Goblin sharks are very uncommon deep sea shark species and are the sole surviving member of the family species, which dates back 125 million years. It's often referred to as a living fossil, with an elongated, flat snout and extremely pronounced jaws bearing sharp, nail like teeth. This pink skinned mammal has a unique appearance to say the least. When fully grown, it's typically between 3 and 4 meters long, but it's possible for the shark to grow much bigger. There was even one that was caught in the year 2000 that was estimated to be 6 meters long. Goblin sharks are animals that live at depths of more than 100 meters on upper continental slopes, underwater canyons, and sea mounts all around the globe, with adults being found deeper than their youngsters. The goblin shark's physical characteristics, such as its flabby body and tiny fins, indicate that it's a slow-moving creature. The species hunts all kinds of things on the seafloor and in the water column, and it has what's called ampullae of Lorenzini on its long snout, which allows it to detect minute electric fields generated by surrounding prey. Number 18. Blobfish Now I'm not so sure if terrifying is the right word for such a dopey looking animal. It certainly looks as though someone drew a squidward face on someone's kidney. Blobfish are found in deep waters only a few meters above the bottom of the ocean in the waters off the coasts of southeastern Australia and Tasmania. At depths of 2,000 feet or more, the water pressure is crushing. It's more than 60 times higher than the pressure of water at the surface. If you were to live down that far, you'd most likely be squashed into a blob as well. The blobfish's couch potato 
potato mentality is aided by the fact that it's a gelatinous blob. His physical composition allows him to glide effortlessly over the ocean's bottom without exerting much effort on his own behalf. Consider the following scenario, though. A water balloon is dropped into a pool full of people, and it just floats around at the bottom of the pool, seemingly at random. A similar scenario occurs with the blobfish, with the exception of the pool and the large numbers of humans. Number 17. Fangtooth Fish Well now, just look at these little nightmares. So cute and murderous at the same time. I can't help but love and simultaneously be terrified of them at the same time. The fangtooth have been known to move near the surface at night, pursuing their favorite food of crustaceans and other fishes while spending most of their time in the depths. Rather than being exclusively ambush predators, common fangtooths are more active than many other deep sea fishes and will actively search for food. They can attack prey that they locate in the vast, food-poor deep sea, mostly because of their enormous jaws and long fangs. Unlike other deep sea fishes, common fangtooths are dark colored, either solid brown or black, and lack light producing organs or cells for communication to attract prey. Instead, they depend primarily on their sense of smell and sight, taking advantage of even the tiniest rays of sunshine that make it down to the depths. Though the light is insufficient to see clearly, prospective prey species may create a shadow as they pass above. In such situations, this species species seems to adopt a bite first and ask questions later mentality. The common fangtooth, like any other fangtooth species, is more closely related to shallow water squirrel fishes than to other deep sea fishes. Common fangtooths are harmless to humans, despite their intimidating appearance and ferocious appetite. They only grow to be approximately 7 inches long, and they are kind of cute, right? Number 16. Viper fish. It seems to me that the viper fish and the fangtooth fish are related. Does it seem that way to any of you? Well, the viper fish, despite its menacing look, is actually a tiny species that grows to around 11 or 12 inches in length. Although the primary light organ lies at the end of the extended dorsal fin ray, numerous phosphors may be seen all along the fish's side. This may help the fish hide from predators lying below. They're also used to lure prey and communicate with potential mates or competitors. The viper fish's exceptionally big teeth help it grab a hold of its food when hunting in the dark, just like the fang tooth. Viper fish have also been seen floating still in the water, swinging their lures like a fishing rod, all to entice their prey. One really disgusting fact about these fish is that their skulls are actually movable and can be tilted slightly up to swallow exceptionally big prey. Oh, and they also have really big stomachs, allowing them to gorge themselves anytime food is abundant. Because viper fish have an extremely low basal metabolic rate, they may spend days without eating. This adaptation is most likely a consequence of the deep sea's scarcity of food. Humans do seldom see them, but specimens sometimes turn up in the hull of deep sea trawlers. Scientists have a rare opportunity to examine this elusive species because of these sporadic captures. Number 15. Northern Stargazer the northern stargazer is a very strange looking fish with a big head and a speckled flattened body and it totally looks like it should be named Bubba. The body of the northern stargazer is blackish brown with white dots that become larger from its head to its tail. Its flattened body can grow up to 22 inches long, although it usually stays between 8 and 18 inches long. They hunt by burying themselves in the sand and then protruding their eyes and mouths just enough to look for prey. In a couple of seconds, the stargazer uses its side fins like shovels to dig under the sand. And when something delicious swims by, the stargazer creates a vacuum using its huge mouth to suck its prey in. Northern stargazers have an organ on their heads that can emit an electric charge that stuns and confuses prey while also helping to keep predators at bay. 
Larvae develop quickly, eating on a yolk sac until it's absorbed entirely. They then swim to the bottom of the bay when they reach 12 to 15 millimeters in length, where they develop into adults. Their electronic organ is also starting to develop at this period. Number 14. The Sarcastic Fringe Head Small and intriguing, the sarcastic fringe head is found off the coasts of California and Baja. The spectacular display of fighting that the males engage in while defending their own territories has made this species famous around the world. This system of strong male rivalry and territoriality is driven by female sexual selection, which results in a male-dominated environment. The male sarcastic fringe heads make their presence known to one another by opening their enormous lips in the direction of their opponents, a combination of the mouth's frightening coloring and its enormous proportions, which may be as much as four times its closed size. This all allows the bigger male to assert control over the smaller one. Frequently, the competitors' lips are pushed extremely close to one another, sometimes almost touching each other just like kissing. Typically, the smaller person surrenders and departs the area without the couple engaging in physical combat. Number 13. The Frilled Shark The frilled shark is a weird and prehistoric-looking shark that inhabits the open ocean and spends most of its time down under the sea surface in deep, dark waters. It has a long cylindrical body that reaches almost 7 feet in length, and its fins are positioned far back. The frilly look of the frilled shark's gill slits gives it its name. Frilled sharks are aggressive predators that will lunge at their prey and devour it completely, even if it's very big. However, their typical swimming technique is eel-like as they swim in a serpentine pattern. Frilled sharks are known to consume a range of fish as well as other sharks, despite their specialization in squid. Because frilled sharks are so uncommon in the wild, little is actually known about their ecology. Dissection of animals caught in deep sea net fisheries and observation of the rare living ones in captivity provide scientists with the little knowledge that they do have. Internal fertilization is used by frilled sharks to breed and deliver live birth, though they don't, however, use a placenta to link to their offspring as other mammals do. Rather, embryos get their energy from yolk sacs, and the mother only gives birth to her young when the juveniles have shown they can survive on their own. Number 12. The Vampire Squid the vampire squid's neither a squid nor even an octopus, actually. Despite its appearance, it's a one-of-a-kind creature that scientists have divided into its own category. The vampire squid, like many of its cousins, has eight arms and two tentacles. It doesn't suck or consume blood, as I was totally hoping that it would, but instead derives its name from the black color of its skin and cape-like skin that links the arms. Basically, this makes the vampire goth kid version of a squid. The species dwells in the mesopelagic zones, almost totally black waters, just like its pitch black soul. The vampire squid inverts its cloak when disturbed, revealing enormous spines on the underside of its arms, and the species seems to be very dangerous when it adopts this position, however, it's really fairly harmless. The squid is not predatory in any way. It feeds on plant and animal debris that sinks from the surface of the water in this manner. Vampire squids are reported to be eaten by bigger fish and diving predators. The vampire squid, unlike shallow water squids and octopuses, actually don't spew black ink to avoid their predators. Black or dark purple ink would be useless in the mesopelagic zone's darkness. Instead, the vampire squid exhales a colorless liquid containing many bioluminescent luminescent light-producing particles. Potential predators are confused by the sparkling lights, which is a pretty trippy way to make an escape, if you ask me. Number 11. The Coffin Fish the coffin fish is kind of a sea toad that belongs to a family that features 17 different species and may be found in the southwestern Pacific, off the coast of Australia, in salty temperate seas as well. The coffin fish was originally found in Sicily, Italy, by the captain of the Libra, a trawler docked at Mazara at the time. 
They feature a spiny, globose body that develops to a maximum length of 22 centimeters, a black mouth lining, and a snout with a top fin that may be lowered into a groove. The coffin fish, like the puffer fish, has inflated gills that it utilizes to fill its body with water as a defensive strategy. There's no inhalation or expiration for 26 to 245 seconds after the gill chambers are fully filled with water. This is an advantage in terms of energy conservation. With complete gill chambers, the body of the fish will expand in bulk by 30%, protecting it from its predators. The adult coffin fish is an ambush predator that utilizes tiny lures above their snouts to get small crustaceans into their jaws. The nutrition of larval and juvenile coffin fishes is actually unknown, although they're believed to consume plankton in their early stages. Shrimp and other fish are also favorites, which are also a food source for a variety of other insect marine animals. Number 10. Giant Isopod for those of you who are squeamish when it comes to insects and the like, here's your fair warning. The giant isopod will definitely give you the heebie-jeebies. These 14-legged goliaths are distant cousins of the tiny wood lice you may see scuttling about in the garden. The giant isopod is the biggest of the isopod species, and are crustaceans that have been described by experts as being more than a handful. To put it another way, these arthropods are considerably bigger than your typical pill insect, and from head to tail they can grow to be more than 30 centimeters long. because the seabed is largely barren, isopods depend on food dropping from closer to the surface. Large packages of food, such as whale falls, sometimes reach the bottom, and when marine creatures die and begin to degrade, the portions that aren't eaten near the surface sink down, and it may resemble snowflakes in appearance since it's white and fluffy. However, owing to food shortages, animals must often be patient and wait for extended periods of time to get what they need. It's possible that they'll have to wait even years. According to reports from Japan, a gigantic isopod held in custody went five years without feeding. Another aspect that may contribute to increasing body size is the fact that the deeper an animal dwells, the fewer predators that it actually encounters. This would allow animals to develop to their full potential, which explains a lot about some of the fish on our list. Number 9. The Red-Lipped Batfish if the red-lipped batfish and the vampire squid got together, I think they'd make one heck of a goth rock group. I wonder what their band name would be. It's unclear why the batfish has such a distinguishing physical appearance, but it's possible that it helps to attract mates or recognize other members of the same species while they're at reproduction locations. The red-lipped batfish dwells in the seas around the Galapagos Islands, where it may be found at depths of up to 75 meters. It's also evolved to live as a bottom dweller, which means that it lives and feeds on the seabed. Despite the fact that it's a terrible swimmer, its modified fins serve as temporary legs, allowing it to walk down the beach. If speed is needed though, the batfish may propel itself through the water with its strong tail and push off with its pelvic fins, which are located underneath the fish's body. Another distinguishing feature of the fish is a fleshy protrusion on the top of its head called an elysium. This attachment includes a chemical emitting lure that's believed to aid in attracting the tiny fish and invertebrates, which it preys upon. Despite the fact that there are no known predators for the fish, I think we might be hearing some tunes from its goth rock band soon enough. Number 8. Amphipods For this entry, we're really entering the macroscopic world of underwater animals. Amphipods are crustaceans that lack a shell and have bodies that are compressed sideways. They're mainly scavengers, ranging in size from 1 to 340 millimeters, and to date, more than 9,900 amphipod species have been identified. They're mostly marine creatures, although they may be found in nearly all aquatic habitats. Freshwater is home to about 1,900 of the species, as well as land dwelling animals including sandhoppers. So. Amphipods may be found in virtually every aquatic habitat, from fresh water to water with double the salinity of seawater and even the Challenger Deep. 
the world's deepest known point. They're nearly always considered very essential members of aquatic ecosystems and are often found in plankton samples. The majority of amphipods are scavengers, but other are algae grazers, omnivores, or predators of tiny insects and crustaceans. The front two pairs of legs, which are equipped with enormous claws, are used to grab food. Amphipods that are more stationary consume more of the less nutritious food rather than actively searching for more nutritional food. Compensatory feeding is a kind of feeding that's used to compensate for a lack of food, meaning they stuff their microscopic faces from time to time. This behavior may have developed to reduce the danger of becoming another animal's prey while looking for other meals. Number 7. Tongue-Eating Louse I think the name pretty much sums it up for number 7. It's literally a parasite that latches onto the tongues of fishes and then eats the tongue. Ew. So what is the parasite? Well, the tongue-eating louse is a free-floating swimmer that latches onto the gills of certain species of fish and enters the body. They next make their way up to the mouth and gently cut the blood veins that feed the tongue. The tongue dies and falls off as a result of starvation, and the louse, still within the fish's mouth, takes over and steals nutrition from whatever the fish is consuming as well as part of the fish's blood. When the louse removes its host's tongue, it does more than simply simply replace it physically, it also fulfills the functions that a fish tongue would. It has a form and size that's similar to that of its hosts and may be utilized in the same restricted manner as a real fish tongue does. All fish have some kind of parasitism protection, and a big isopod that lives in one's mouth and steals nutrients while doing nothing helpful may be a good target for eradication. But one that actually serves as one's tongue? it's impossible to replace. These creatures must have become more tongue-like, more picky of the precise blood arteries to nom their way through, and yes, more progressively terrifying over generations and generations. Number 6. Gulper Eel the big mouth is the most distinguishing and disgusting feature on this next fish, and it's also more than likely the inspiration for the name. The eel's massive mouth dwarfs the whole body, which can move flexibly and may expand wide enough to swallow an animal many times its own size. The unfortunate prey is subsequently placed into a pouch-like lower jaw that's pretty much like a pelican's pouch. In fact, the pelican eel is a common name for this eel as well. The stomach of a gulper may also expand to handle big meals. The gulper eel is unlike any other eel species in terms of appearance. Its pectoral fins are so little, in fact, that they're virtually undetectable. It has tiny eyes, unlike many other deep sea animals, and the eyes, rather than forming pictures, are thought to have developed to detect tiny traces of light. The tail of the gulper eel is extremely long and whip-like, with a photophore, or light-producing organ, attached to the tip. The photophore glows pink and sometimes emits red flashes due to a phenomenon known as bioluminescence. Because the eel's body isn't designed for pursuing food, it's thought that it utilizes this light as a fishing bait to bring fish and other animals to its massive mouth. When the target is within striking range, the eel then rushes and snatches the prey up in its enormous jaws. Now, I get it already. The fish likes to gulp things. Jeez. Number 5. Water Bear Tardigrades, often known as moss piglets or water bears, are tiny creatures with long, fat bodies and scrunched up heads. They have eight legs and four to eight claws on each of their hands, and these little creatures are extremely indestructible and can even live in space despite their beautiful appearance. They may actually be anywhere from 0.05 millimeters to 1.2 millimeters long, although they seldom exceed one millimeter in length. According to Smithsonian Magazine, tardigrades can survive temperatures as low as minus 328 degrees Fahrenheit and as high as more than 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They can also withstand radiation, boiling liquids, enormous pressures of up to six times that of the deepest section of the ocean, and even space without any protection. Some tardigrade species may live 10 days in low Earth orbit, despite being subjected to space vacuums and radiation. Maybe we should just go ahead and militarize these little guys. Researchers did discover that water bears may even be able to live long after humans have vanished. Over the following billion years, scientists 
looked at the likelihood of various astronomical occurrences like Earth plummeting asteroids, nearby supernova explosions, and more, and then calculated the likelihood of such catastrophes wiping out Earth's toughest species. Humans, of course, did not make the cut, but these cute little water bears, they'll be doing just fine. Number 4. Pacific Black Dragon the Pacific Black Dragon is a deep-sea predator that dwells between 700 and 3,300 feet deep in the eastern Pacific Ocean. They're known to move near the surface at night, pursuing their favorite food of tiny crustaceans and other fish, all while spending most of their time in these deep waters. Their bodies are pitch black, and even their guts are covered with black tissue to hide off any light that's generated by light-producing creatures they consume, since they are ambush predators after all. Pacific black dragons contain many rows of specialized light cells called photophores that are likely utilized to lure mates along their dark bodies. At the end of the long barbell that hangs down from the chin, they have a distinct light organ. This organ attracts prey to their teeth-filled jaws by acting as bait. Even though it dwells in deep waters, the Pacific Black Dragon's favored depths get some sunshine throughout the day, resulting in big, well-developed eyes. Surprisingly, the Pacific Black Dragon's females actually have the majority of the traits that I just mentioned. Males are smaller, lack the teeth, stomachs, and barbells, and are unable to actually eat. They never truly exit the larval stage of growth and the egg yolk is their only source of sustenance. Males only live long enough to mate before passing away. It's kind of sad if you think about it. Then you look at how horrifying the fish is and you think, ah, maybe it's for the better. Number 3. Basking Shark the basking shark is the world's second biggest fish, and like the world's largest fish, the whale shark, and the world's largest animals, great whales, it's what's called a filter feeder, one that feeds on microscopic planktonic food. The basking shark, which may grow up to be 40 feet long and resemble predatory sharks in appearance, can seem frightening, yet they're completely harmless. They spend most of their time at the surface, swimming with their enormous mouths open, sifting out their favored food, although they do sometimes dip deeper to feed. Because they have extremely wide individual home ranges and don't remain in any one location for more than a few months, scientists have gaps in their understanding of the life cycle features. Despite Despite their size. Female basking sharks give birth to live offspring after mating through internal fertilization. In contrast to whale sharks, which give birth to hundreds of tiny pups, basking sharks only have a few big newborns. Shark scientists think that basking sharks give birth to the biggest offspring of all fishes, barely edging out the great white shark, based on the minimum size of individuals seen in the wild, which is six feet, and a single pregnant individual captured by a fisher. Number 2. The Black Swallower The Black Swallower is a fish that lives in the deepest regions of the ocean. They're members of the fish family, which also includes tuna and anglerfish. The family to which they belong is sometimes known as snake teeth fishes or simply swallowers. Because these fish dwell at deep depths, they can't be eaten if they're still alive. Adult individuals may be found in depths that range from 700 to 2,745 meters, which isn't exactly a pleasant place to be. These are a tiny group of fish to boot. The majority of them reach a maximum height of 25 centimeters, but some individuals may actually grow a bit taller. The fish's lengthy body isn't actually covered with scales. Most fish have tiny plates on their bodies that serve as a kind of protection. But the black swallower doesn't require them, since they dwell at such deep depths and are the predators in their environment. This means that their skin is generally smooth and well suited to the deep sea. The fact that black swallowers have such a large mouth is one of the most interesting things about them. The fish's lower jaw may stretch beyond the upper mouth, which enables them to devour their food, which seems to be a very common trait of deep sea fish at this point. Number 1. Chimera 
Chimeras may be found on temperate ocean bottoms as deep as 2,600 meters, with just a few species found at depths of less than 200 meters. They're among a few species of the Chimera order that are maintained in public aquariums, and except for the Arctic and Antarctic, they may be found in all seas across the globe. They feature a large head and a single gill hole, and their bodies are elongated and squishy. They may grow up to 150 centimeters in length, which includes a long tail that certain species have. The snout of several animals has been transformed into an extended sensory organ. Chimera skeletons are made entirely of cartilage. Their skin is smooth and bare, and a spectrum of colors from black to brownish gray. Most of them have a poisonous spine in front of their dorsal fin for protection protection, and these fins allow them to fly across water. If you see one of these little buggers flying at you, might I suggest you run away? I was always a bit afraid of heading into the ocean for a swim, but now I think I'll stay out of the water for the rest of my life. Which of these horrifying creatures will be haunting your dreams tonight? Also, what should the name of that goth rock band be? Let me know in the comments below check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.